I loved the old school Raw because all those guys came back, so that was awesome. The fan in me was just, this is awesome. Them having me dress as a 70s announcer for a show that was from the 90s, <laughs> that didn't make sense, but I think it was just their idea of a rib, so whatever. But because I, I said, like, all right, so I'm going to dress as a 1970s-looking announcer for a show that started in the early 90s. No problem. And then I think for one show they let me do, like, I go, well, Howard wore a tuxedo with a bow tie, so if I could just do that, and I think we got to do that at one of them. But yeah, they, they'd bring back all those guys. I mean, they'd end up just, like, having them dance around in backstage segments or at ringside, but just it was cool that they were there. It was cool to have them on the show, and when I got to, like, go through and announce the lineup of all of them, like, name after name, that was awesome. Awesome. I was on Monday Night Raw announcing all these guys from my childhood. That that lineup was pretty great, and uh, the one that you you know you referenced kind of dancing there was uh, was Tatanka, and if anybody remembers back at that point, social media was kind of in its infancy, but Tatanka was uh, telling people he's making his raw return, it's gonna be a big spot, and then he ended up just dancing in the back of uh, one of the sketches with Dusty Rhodes and a couple of the other folks. Uh, but that lineup was crazy. I mean, that was your childhood right there. That was all the biggies. But was there ever one name? that you just got butterflies in your stomach as you were about to announce it for the first time? Uh, Hulk Hogan. I had been waiting for that for so long. Uh, Goldberg, when I did that in, like, 2004-ish. Um, the Rock. Um, first time I got to do that. Um, those are just a few of the names. But, yeah, that was awesome. You were uh, you were ringside for quite a few of those great uh, return of Hulkamania uh, moments over those uh, that little span that he had coming back around uh, 2005, where you know those some of those Monday Night Raws and some of those appearances that he had were just uh, they were very memorable. And John and I attended a lot of them, and it was quite a summertime uh, to be back uh, involved with Hulkamania. But another thing, and just kind of mentioning social media, when you were always ringside, you were always interacting with the fans. You were always, people were taking selfies with you. They were posting them all over the place. Talk about, if you can, a little bit more, that special relationship that you've had with the fans. And just basically, you know, as a fan yourself, you know what it's like to get that interaction. But you basically, you know, you would touch the life of a child with every show you had. Was that something that just meant the absolute world to you? The best part of the job was um, just seeing people's faces light up and, um, like, how easy it was for for somebody to meet a wrestler, see a wrestler, or get somebody's armband from a wrestler. And that was awesome. It was so easy to make people happy. Um, you know, on my end, if I, if I could give somebody something or take a picture with somebody, like, I know what they felt like because I was sitting there and watching every show – with them. I was sitting and watching every show literally with them before I was doing my job, you know, before I made it to the job, I was sitting in the crowd and I know exactly what they're thinking. So I was always a fan the whole time I worked there. So when I was taking pictures and hanging out with fans at ringside, like I'm a fan, just hanging out with other fans. We spoke the same language. So it was just fun. It was, it was just fun hanging out and, and doing that kind of stuff. And like I said, just so easy to make people happy. It was uh, it was always cool, whether it was a house show or whether it was a raw. You'd always see, uh, no matter what town it was, that the uh, the selfies would start pouring in from the folks at ringside, and uh, the interactions are great. <laughs> I know, you know, the one time I was able to sneak down to the front row at the Meadowlands and see what Ahmed Johnson looked like up close was uh, at that point in time was uh, was kind of mind boggling. But you know, I'm sure there's a fan or two out there that you might have inspired to kind of, you know, maybe get behind the microphone or get uh, into the wrestling business somehow. But, you know, what's that advice that you give to an aspiring broadcaster who either wants to be a wrestling announcer or a sports announcer? What's kind of the, uh, the path that you send them down? Tell them to follow their dreams and uh, to announce anything they can. And if they want it bad enough, they could get it. They just have to go for it and, you know, put themselves out there. So tell everybody, um, don't follow your dreams. Anything and everything is possible, and, and I really stand behind that. And following dreams and all these great things we talked about, we've got to mention your first WrestleMania and kind of tell us, walk us through that if you can. 
what it was like. You know, we can't beat it into the ground enough that you were a big fan, and I'm sure you cover this all in the book, but, you know, stepping through the curtain for a WrestleMania, looking out into the entire field, and at that point, uh, WWE had not really begun to do the stadiums on a big uh, level, but they were starting to. But the first time you're able to walk through the curtain for a WrestleMania, what is going through the mind of Justin Roberts? Uh, that would be WrestleMania 23, so it, it was in the stadium. Um, it was supposed to be WrestleMania in L.A., but it, it ended up being 23 in Detroit. So uh, it was almost like, is this really going to happen? Because I had been told a couple different times that I was going to be doing Mania. So when I actually went out there, I wasn't 100% positive that it was going to be happening. So um, when it actually happened and I walked down to the ring and I just kind of sat there for the show, uh, I think we were, like, segment shortly after, like, Donald... Oh, no, it was before Donald Trump. I just remember being down there with Donald Trump, um, just taking it all in, taking every part of that in. And the match before us was actually Undertaker and Batista. And um, I ended up running from the Undertaker and ended up, like, falling, and JR's tea had spilled. So my pants were drenched from falling in JR's tea. So... <laughs> I can honestly say that I wet my pants at WrestleMania uh, right before I went in the ring to make my WrestleMania debut. So standing in the middle of the ring looking out to see a people was awesome. Um, and my pants were wet from tea. <laughs> what, a, what a WrestleMania moment. <laughs> yeah. And it's cool because... Uh, Jim Ross's wife, Jan Ross, uh, one of the nicest people I've ever met in my life, not just in wrestling, just ever. Uh, she's awesome. And she and I were talking about the book last summer, and she said, you know, make sure you, you tell us as, as your audience, I want to know what it felt like when you got in the ring at WrestleMania. And so when I put that in the book, that was for her. That was, um, she gave me the idea that people want to know what it's like. So um, make sure to talk about that. 